In the past two years, a lot has gone on in the AI world. It started out with these little pieces of research that absolutely blew our minds at the capabilities possible with AI technology. And now, companies and the market as a whole has had time to react to that AI. And now we're getting stuff like custom-built AI hardware and so much more. We're gonna be covering everything today and getting you up to speed on the latest in AI. So first up, we have this announcement from 11labs. IO, which if you remember is the best text-to-speech in the game point blank period better than any other TTS and certainly the best AI TTS that I've ever experienced. Now Sora AI text-to-video was announced if you didn't hear about that you must have been living under an AI rock but anyways 11 labs kind of announced something pretty large for them they said we were so blown away by OpenAI's Sora text-to-video announcement that they felt it needed something what if you could describe a sound and then generate it with AI AI. And we've seen this before. We've seen technology that is text to sound effect. But I gotta say, Eleven Labs is taking it on a whole nother level. This is stuff that we haven't seen before. It's the best text to sound I've ever heard. I have some connections with Eleven Labs, so I'm gonna try to get early access for you guys and produce a full video about it. But for now, put your headphones on and take a listen to this AI generated sound effect for the Sora trailer. In a place beyond imagination, where the horizon kisses the heavens, one man dares to journey where few have ventured. Armed with nothing but his wit and an unyielding spirit, he seeks the answers to mysteries that lie beyond the stars. Man. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, I have been keeping up with audio AI, sound effect generation, music generation, text-to-speech. I haven't heard anything close to that in terms of AI sound effect generation. And, you know, obviously these results in this little trailer are going to be a little bit cherry-picked, but man, they were very clear. I think they might have even been stereo. Correct me if I'm wrong, tell me what you guys think about that, but just really impressive overall, and I'm super excited to get access to this. In general, level Labs has had some pretty big updates that I haven't covered yet. Something that I'm looking into covering soon, probably along with the sound effects. But uh, I mean, the Sora AI text to video from OpenAI plus this 11 Labs sound effect generation, that's pretty killer. You gotta admit, the rapid development of AI isn't slowing down at all, and it's both terrifying and really exciting. You can kind of get a glimpse of the future with this. We have the insane text to video generation by OpenAI, making actual watchable content and then sound effects completely generated by 11 labs for anything you need plus the actual voice speaking by 11 labs also could be the only two tools you really need to get out there and start creating masterpieces all just in front of your computer at home super interesting i know it's divisive to think about a future like that but it's coming either way genie's out of the bottle but yeah if you guys want to sign up for early access it'll be linked down below like i said i'm gonna try to use some of my connections to get even earlier access next up this is a really interesting announcement. There's a company called Grok? Grok? I don't know how you would say it. Very similar to Elon Musk's Grok AI, mind you, on X, but only name-wise because this is AI hardware. This is like an actual hardware chip that's designed specifically just to run AI. And I really want to put this in good context for those of you who might not know that much about computer hardware. Right now, all AI is done on GPUs, which are meant to do a a lot more than just AI, but they can complete the task. They're not specifically designed to do AI, because AI is so new, it's, it's such a new thing, the market never saw a need for it, but like I said in the beginning of this video, two years after this sort of AI explosion, we're starting to see the need for AI hardware. When you specifically design hardware to run AI, it becomes a lot faster, and as it scales over time, it becomes a lot cheaper, and I want you to really try to think about the future here. You know, your phone, your computer might 
have an AI processing chip in it to complete AI tasks much faster than we see today. And certainly it will become a lot cheaper again as it scales over time. This is the beginning catalyst where this starts to explode and AI becomes drastically exponentially cheaper. This is the kind of stuff that enables mass scale AI. So yeah, it's by this company called Grok. They have a different approach centered around its compiler technology for optimizing minimalist yet high performance architecture for these chips. These chips do away with unnecessary logic in favor of raw parallel throughput. It's comparable to an ASIC, which is a chip essentially designed to just to mine like Bitcoin or something. What's also cool is that it works with any large language model as well. These chips have a custom compiler that can adapt and optimize over time across different models. And I mean, if you guys are interested in hardware development, you can read all this. Again, it's all linked down in the description below, but just so you get a, a visual idea of this, this is the Grok chip right here, and this is a GTX 1070, for example. And the extra complexity leads to obviously more compute costs, and you know, we're just trying to do AI here. We don't need to do all this other kind of graphics processing, all that other other stuff GPUs or graphics processing units typically do. You can see it's a it's a completely different design. It's much more simple. And here's the actual card itself. Pretty awesome. I mean, imagine putting one of these AI cards in your computer. Really crazy that we're starting to already see AI first chips. You might not care about this, but you can actually try this level of speed and efficiency yourself. And it's absolutely mind-bending. All you got to do is go to the Grok website where you can select from any number of different open source large language models like Meta's Llama 270B or Mixtral 8X7B. Both are pretty darn good open source models and for completely free you can use this large language model just like ChatGPT. The quality of these open source models is a little bit behind the closed source ones right now but new better open source models are absolutely coming in the future and we're actually going to be talking about one today. So let's do a, a basic prompt here. We'll ask it something somewhat technical. Watch how fast we get a response out of this thing. You can see there's over 2,000 active requests. There's all of the tokens generated. End-to-end -end time, and this is swamped by the way, the servers are swamped, less than five seconds. And if we go to more information down here, you'll notice the input tokens per second is 2,500, well over a thousand words per second of input. The output is around 406 tokens per second. So while the whole generation time up here was less than five seconds, we were waiting for a open GPU or should I say open Grok processing unit. For most of that time, the actual generation for the model to intake the information and output it was only a little over one second to get this full response. Absolutely mind blowing. And like I said, it's completely free for you to try out right now. I mean, this is a true glimpse into the future of this AI technology and how cheap and how fast it's going to be delivered to you. Again, you can see the total end-to-end -end time was 40 seconds, which is really not that fast at all, but that's not actually the model generating the text. That's just waiting for us to get to one of their actually LPUs that they're called. Once we get there, it's less than a second to produce this poem from this prompt, and it's just absolutely mind-blowing. Imagine how much faster your GPT models would be, your GPT-4, for example, if they had a bunch of cards like this. And yeah, this is like a relatively small company too. You'd expect this kind of thing from NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, but nope, it's coming from this little Grok company that I had never heard of before. It'll be really interesting to see how NVIDIA reacts because I assume they're going to be working on something very similar to this. We'll see if the big players, NVIDIA, AMD, etc., can wipe out these small little startups that are building these inference-based processing units. So if you guys saw my last video, I spoke about Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is Google's new Gemini model that actually seems to have some real chops and really compete with GPT-4, apparently being able to take in as much as 1 million tokens, which is vastly more tokens than any model we've seen previously. Uh, this model right now is in a very limited preview, but uh, some folks like Matt Schumer, for example, have been really putting it to the test since they've got uh, this access and have been sharing results. So in this example, Matt Schumer gave Gemini 1.5 Pro eight different research papers and then asked it to reason through promising future research directions using a very specific output format. Truthfully, I think the results speak for themselves here. These are all AI papers as well, and it's pretty insane that it's able to intake 
eight different research papers and then actually reason about their future implications and how they connect to each other. That's just levels of data processing that we have not seen. And the fact that Matt Schumer actually input AI-based research papers in here brings up a really, really valuable, important point about AI technology. Part of the reason that people are so gung-ho and excited about this technology is that they believe it has the potential for an exponential growth in power, essentially. It starts off pretty slow, and we have models that can do things like GPT-5, answer basic questions about the universe, reason and think through things, help you write, come up with creative ideas. But once you get to these models like Gemini 1.5 Pro, where it can take in a million tokens at once, we can start really comparing and contrasting things and actually having the AI fuel the research of AI development. So it's sort of this recursive positive feedback loop. And if you think that OpenAI and the rest of them aren't using AI to build more AI, you're absolutely wrong. That's one of the reasons people are like, oh, in a few years, you're going to see this. In a few years, you're going to see that. And it's certainly been proven, I think, with OpenAI Sora that, well, things are moving a lot faster than most of us think. It's kind of mind-blowing. Just a really great example there. I had to bring that up. I would recommend checking out the rest of Matt Schumer's page here. Really been putting this model through its paces if you want to learn more about Gemini 1.5. Oh, here we go. This is a pretty awesome one. Gemini 1.5 found the speaker of a single sentence out of an entire Harry Potter book. 3,600 tokens. Matt Schumer also knows that GPT-4 can only handle 128,000 and actually does so pretty poorly at the long end. So this is orders of magnitude greater and it still did a really good job. You'll notice this is the specific part of the book that it's asking to mention and um, it's able to say who actually spoke that specific line in the book. That's, that's incredible. It's really impressive. Matt Schumer has been pretty blown away by this model overall in his testing with his early access, stating OpenAI has to catch up soon and I'm sure that they're working on stuff in the background. I don't think they're sweating too much, but yeah, you can have video inputs and this thing can parse them and essentially gives you a really nice summary. He also showed Gemini 1.5 Pro an entire code base for his self-operating computer code base, which is open source and fantastic, by the way. From there, it was able to perfectly explain how the code base works and then implanted itself as the new supported model for the repo. Not perfect, but really close. That's really awesome to see that this thing is able to do code because that is so important. His tests go on and on again. I'm going to link his whole profile down below. Really phenomenal AI account to follow. Keep in mind, regular Gemini wasn't all that impressive. Just about GPT-4 capabilities, probably a little bit worse. 1.5 Pro seems to be at least on par and can accept way, 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 way more tokens and also can accept video inputs and audio inputs as well. It's a big deal. OpenAI has to keep their eye out on it. I think Think that they have something up their sleeve though, you know, open AI is pretty tricky. Next up here, Mistral AI, the king of open source large language models, just unveiled their new model that they call Mistral Next. A lot of people say that it's close to GPT-4 quality, however, it might not code well, it definitely has some weaknesses, but it is going to be open source. That's the beauty of these Mistral models. They're very good and also completely free. All right, who are you? I'm a large language model trained by the Mistral AI team. We'll ask it a basic logic question. What's heavier, a pound of bacon or a pound of feathers? Ah, there you go. Both of them weigh the same. That is what we expect. Let's try a creative response. All right, it's describing an alien landscape for us. Hey, not bad, not bad. I would say one thing that obviously GPT-4 is going to do better here is produce more text, but this thing probably could do with a little bit of pre-prompting to make it more user-friendly, let's say. Let's see if it can do this. Oh, wow, it absolutely can. I told it to write an entire paragraph with words that all start with the letter A. Verdant forest, an agile advert ambled along the arched winding path. Yeah, I guess you can't really fully write a sentence with only the letter A as the starting letter, it still used A as much as it could. I don't know if it's going to beat GPT-4, but it is indeed open source while the others aren't. We'll just have to see how this uh, train continues to go. Of course, Mistral's models are all based off of the meta open source Llama 2 language models, and Llama 3 is supposed to be coming this year from the Zuck himself, so I'm excited to see how that thing plays out. And he said he's going to open source it as well, which is a pretty big deal. I think we're going to 
to see some really awesome uh, open source large language models in 2024. Thanks guys for watching. I'm at VidPro AI. I'll see you in the next one. If there's any news I missed, please let me know down in the comments below. Lots of interesting things going on in the AI space. Catch you in the next one.